Talk Radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. For the masses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's never going to get old. Today's Tuesday, February 12, 2019. 43 days into the new year, just 322 days left. As always, we are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world. All across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? What an amazing show last night. Jay-Z night. That was absolutely incredible. And, and here's the deal. When I wrap a show like that, like last night, I'm in the same mood that you're in. Right? That was just incredible. And then I started to think to myself, well, wait a minute here. Tomorrow night, I've got Jay Widener, (laughs) right? So Jay-Z night, Jay Widener tonight, tomorrow night, Isaac Arthur, and then Fader night. How great is that? How could I not just be in the best mood ever? Nothing but knowledge this week. Nothing but knowledge. And that's what uh, this show is here to do. Now, um, before... Before I jump ahead, I've got to just stay current here with what everybody is seeing here in um, uh, Rita. You blew the surprise. I was going to kind of mention that and Vader the Fader and 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 do the introduction on Thursday night when he gets here. Oh, man. Well, that kills that. <laughs> We've got uh, Vader the Fader, uh, the giant skull, is uh, is on its way here um, to the bunker. And hopefully it'll be here Thursday night for the show. 23 pounds. He's this big. 23 pounds. He's ginormous. He's, he's, he's gorgeous. He's handsome. He's Vader the Fader. And in these pictures here, I'm going to retweet now that uh, literally the cat is out of the bag. Um, the, uh, pictures of him next to, um, which is really cool next to Einstein and, uh, gives you an idea of, of how, how cool, how, how, uh, how giant this guy is. So look, that's Einstein. That's not, you know how big Einstein is, right? That's Vader, the fader. And he was named by Einstein. Okay, so there he is, and he is on his way to the bunker. There he is getting all charged up, 
hanging out with Einstein. And there you go. That's Vader, the Vader. Look at him. Look at him next to Einstein. I mean, I you know, I just didn't think uh I just didn't think anything like that would uh, come into uh, uh, our lives, Rita and I. But, yeah, Vader the Fader is on his way here. I don't even know how I'm going to display it or show it to you guys. Uh, you know, I guess we'll just, you know, put him here uh, for Thursday night. Where he's going to rest after that, I don't know. You know, Rita Rita's going to lay claim to him. but But at least I'll get to hang out with him for one night. With all of you, that'll be on Thursday. Okay, so anyway, I was just disclosing what Rita was posting there. Vader the Fader. Cool name, too, by the way. Really a cool name. Okay, where are we at? Let's get the show cracking. We've got a lot to do tonight. Jay Widener is here. We are going to do a full evening tonight on the Mystery Schools. And that is all-inclusive of everything. And so just get ready. Um, and going back to all of the shows that uh, classic shows that Jay and I have done over the years, I can I can assure you that uh, every time that Jay and I meet, we always go back to that uh, Falconelli show. You know, we just smile at each other, knowing how how good that show was. That was Radio Gold, and we've done so many great shows after that since then. And here we are tonight. We are circling back. We are going to do the Mystery Schools tonight, okay? So more on that in just a bit. Tomorrow night, Isaac Arthur is here. And again, an education uh, evening, we will be doing the Fermi Paradox, one of the most complex uh, theories out there. It's very complex, okay? And we're going to break all of the elements down tomorrow night. And so after tonight's show, and certainly after last night's show with Jay-Z, but... Uh, you know, tonight with uh, with Jay and tomorrow night with Isaac, you guys are going to have a full uh, uh, curriculum laid out in front of you on a way to, uh, I didn't know I was laying down, <laughs> um, a full curriculum of things to go and study in the uh, days and weeks ahead. Okay, that's that's the best part of Fade to Black. Thursday night, Fader night, open lines all night long. Don't forget to uh, go and check us out on all of our social media, which includes on Stellar, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Everything is Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Go follow, like, and subscribe. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Have you noticed? Have you noticed since uh, Thursday of last week? Have you noticed? I'm not going there. But have you noticed the general uplifting of the spirit of the community? The liveliness of everybody. It is awesome. Absolutely awesome. That's right. (laughs) When the veil is lifted and questions get answered, people smile. And uh, the spirit of of this uh, huge, huge community and and where it is at right now. There are some left scratching their heads. I, I get that. As it should be, but uh, I just love it. Everybody is in just such a great mood. And we will continue that tonight, right? Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. And I've got some breaking news. You really want me to put you in a good mood? I'm going to do it right now. Twice. Get ready. Because Eddie Murphy is coming back to America. That's right. Paramount Pictures confirmed this past Monday that there will be a sequel to Coming to America, and it's set to hit theaters next year. Craig Brewer is going to direct, and Kenya Barris is executive producing. No real talk about details, but, you know, Eddie's the king of Zamunda, (laughs) right? I can't wait for this. I seriously can't wait. And I I think he's, uh, the rumor is he's going to come back to America to look for, like, his long-lost son, the heir to Zamunda, and maybe find him a bride, right? Say, you know, it, it, it's got to be that, right? How, how could it not be that? 
But uh, Coming to America, part two, next year. Very excited. And also, I want to leave you guys with this. Last night, Rita and I started to binge Mars. Okay? Now, this is a Nat Geo series. Uh, it's produced by uh, Ron Howard and, uh, uh, man, I, I just can't remember his, his partner. But uh, But anyway, the series is really, really good. Okay? And, yes, it's about man going to Mars. It's based on current technology. I'm not going to give away spoilers. That ain't going to happen. That's a really good tweet there, Olivia. Thank you for that. And I'm going to retweet that because that's one of the funniest scenes in Coming to America. Uh, Coming to America, uh, great start to finish all the way to the end. No question, but it's so hard to pick out a good scene. <laughs> Iron Americans, that's... See, that scene right there. That boy is good. That's that's a pretty good scene. But then you got to go to all the barbershop scenes, right? Every single one of those. Where do you go with that? When I say he's got his own money, I mean he's got his own money. Anyway, yeah, I can quote that movie all night long. Uh, anyway, where am I? Oh, oh, so back to, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but the series, uh, it takes place in two timelines. Uh, one current timeline, 2016, 2017, and the technology and it's done documentary style, which is really, really cool because Elon Musk uh, plays himself. Robert Zubrin, who's been on this show a couple of times. I just had him on coast a couple of weeks ago. Robert Zubrin is in the film. And so they discuss all of the current technology and, and where the status is today and, and, and the, the selection process of, of finding the right candidates and astronauts to, uh, go, to, uh, to go to Mars. But Mars announced. But then it, then it jumps forward. It goes back and forth between 2033 and, and today with current technologies going to Mars and figuring it out. Now, so... Again, no spoilers. The setup and the production and the way that it's shot and everything else and the storyline about what it would be like is incredible. Incredible. So there you go. There are no lasers. No aliens yet. It's nothing like that. It's incredible. It's incredible. So we're going to continue binging it. And I know, uh, from what I understand, we're in the uh, middle of uh, season one, but there is a season two, and there's talk about a season three coming back. You've got to check it out. It's called Mars, all right? Elon Musk, um, I was listening to him last night, and I've often wondered, Rita and I started talking, so where, where's the accent from? <laughs> where's, where does he get the, where's the accent from? It's from South Africa. And I didn't know that until last night, and I thought I knew everything. All right, come join us. Coming up next week, the 2019 Conscious Life Expo. Next week here in Los Angeles at the LAX Hilton, February 22nd through the 25th. Full weekend of events. We have our Fade to Black booth. Our booth is in the same spot it was last year on the mezzanine level. Uh, you just head up the stairs, the elevator. As soon as you get off the elevator... We're, our booth is right there, right? You will be walking into it, which is really cool because now I can make an escape, right? I can just go to my right on the elevator, gone. Nobody's going to see me come and go. Love it. Love it. We'll be in the same place, mezzanine level, Friday night, celebrating the 50th anniversary of Chariots of the Gods with Eric Von Daniken hosting that panel. You've got to get tickets for that panel just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Click on the banner at Jimmy Church Radio. The panel starts at 7 p.m. on Friday. In the printed program, it says 8 p.m. It doesn't start at 8. I've warned you now for a week. It starts at 7 p.m. We'll see everybody there. All right? And then after that, it's Contact in the Desert, May 31st through June 3rd in Indian Wells, Palm Springs, California, at the Renaissance Indian Wells Resort and Spa tickets and info contact in the desert dot com. And this year I will be hosting the awards dinner. I'll be the host. So get your tickets. Eat dinner with Rita and I. 
right there at the Conscious Life Expo. Come and hang out with us. I want that entire ballroom filled with fader knots and faded black t-shirts. And, and But you got to wear a tie. Okay? All right. We'll see you guys there. And then coming up, right after that, 2019 Soul Tech Conference is over the July 4th weekend at the Sunrise Ranch in Loveland, Colorado. You can sign up for tickets and info right now, soultechgathering.com. Okay, where are we at? Don't forget our podcast. It's just $2 per month. Over 990 shows. And you know what? I think my math has now been completed. Rita, am I right on this? Um, Our 1,000th show is a week from this Thursday. It will be next Thursday, Fader Night. Our 1,000th broadcast is on a Fader Night. How perfect is that? Yeah, think about that. It's coming up. Unbelievable. 1,000. So it took us that many years, right, to get to 1,000. And I don't have to say anything until we get to what? Do I mention 2,000 or do we just wait till 10,000? Right? I can't believe it. Our 1,000th broadcast will be next Thursday night. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to today, Josh Brolin, 51, 51. Christina Ritchie today is 39. And Christina Ritchie will always make my list because of Buffalo 66 with Vincent Gallo. And it, I don't know if I've even mentioned Buffalo 66. I must have over the years. Buffalo 66, write that down. That is one of the great, funny, serious, funny, original movies ever. Buffalo 66. Great ending, too. Great ending. Great ending. All right. Where am I at? On this day in history, big day. That's right, because in 1924, Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin is performed for the first time in New York City. And that's the day the world changed. On this day in 1924, Rhapsody in Blue. Fader fact. Okay, you ready? It's ought to make you feel pretty good. Ph.D. students. Ph.D. students display twice as many symptoms of psychiatric disorders, such as depression, than other people. Yeah, save your email. Don't even write. Don't even write. It's been vetted. Don't even. Don't go there. Tonight, Jay Widener is here. And one of the. One of the hardest things to research is the mystery schools. Even harder than that is alchemy, by the way. Just try it. One day, literally plug in mystery schools into Google and see what happens. You're going to be led down a path that pretty much goes nowhere. Seriously. Sure. You can find the mystery schools mentioned a lot. You can do that. But getting to the real substance, well, it just doesn't exist. Doesn't exist anywhere. The term goes back thousands of years. It is referenced everywhere over time. But who ran them? Who attended the mystery schools? Where were they? Did they have a mascot? Did they have a football team? Right? There's nothing You would think, as you researched, that eventually you would find names, you would find locations, you would find subject matter. But the most famous school of all time, and the oldest, has nothing. And it continues to this day. There are books. There's lots of literature. Oh, it's it's out there. But you can't read them. (laughs) You can't. And I've seen some pretty amazing, hard-to-find documentaries about different private collections around the world. But you, you, you don't have access. And pretty much 
They want it that way. They want to keep these libraries private. And those books on alchemy and the mystery schools are some of the most sought after in the world. And they are talked about a lot, especially in the circles. When anything becomes available, anything, they are sold in advance and snapped up. It's, it's, a, it's a small circle that trades in these volumes. And they are very exclusive and very rich people. So when something comes available... They talk amongst themselves, so-and-so over here in Holland, so-and-so here in South Africa and in London and Los Angeles and New York. When something is going to become available, it's bought. It never really goes to market. It doesn't pop up on eBay, right? The books are rare. Now think about this. When when these books uh, were produced... To produce a book, you have to have money. And I'm talking about a 1,000 years ago, right, to create this. Before that, scribes. We're talking about very exclusive circles here. So it uh, back then, they were printed. It was even a more exclusive club than what we have today. They were printed by the rich. They were kept by the rich. They were read by the rich, by kings and lords in the church, Having access to the materials was impossible, just impossible. But even if you could get your hands on something so long ago, you couldn't read it anyway because you couldn't read. <laughs> nobody nobody could except for the rich and the church. And it's been that way ever since. The knowledge has been kept away from us. It always has, and it always will. Unless, of course, you hang out with Jay Widener. That's right. When you go, when you go and watch something on the net about the mystery schools, or if you find something out there on alchemy or find a book or, or a website, whatever, more than likely, none of the info is based on the real stuff. Seriously, because it doesn't exist. Not to you and I. It's not out there on the net. It doesn't exist. And this is where things get really funny for me. Because when I hear someone talk of this stuff, right, talk about the mystery schools, hermeticism, alchemy, right, and they've given themselves names and they have shirts and, and they have a collection of books, and they want to talk to me about these subjects. You know, I listen. I'm polite. I am. But I know for a fact that they've never read or had access to the real stuff. <laughs> I know it. It's a fact. It's absolutely impossible. It's the truth. Remember my words. It's a fact. Now, I know what you're thinking. Right now, what you are thinking is this. Hey, man, uh, but uh, what about Bill Cooper's uh, Babylon series? That was pretty cool, man. Well, you know what? You are correct. You're 100% correct. I highly recommend that everyone go and listen to every episode of Bill Cooper's Babylon. And any one of you listening to my voice, the next time you see Rita and I standing together, come up to us. Go up to Rita and say, how many times has Jimmy listened to Babylon? How many nights have you had to sleep through Babylon by Bill Cooper? And watch her face. Watch her face. I, I did it for years. Years. So I recommend it. It's some of the best, most accurate of anything out there on the planet when it comes to the mystery schools and alchemy. Why, you ask? <laughs> it's a great question. And I'm glad that you just said why. Where did Bill get all of his secret info? I just told you it's not out there. You can't access it. You can't get to it. And anything that you get to isn't real. I just said that. So where did Bill Cooper get his stuff? Bill Cooper read directly 
from Jay Widener's book, The Monument to the End of Time. That's right. That's right. So get ready. Tonight is a full evening of the mystery schools. All of it. The who, the what, the when, the where. From the beginning until today. And the best source for this information is Jay Widener. I have said many times over the years, and and Jay has looked at me and said, Jimmy, don't 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 say it tonight. Don't you say it. Because Jay Widener is usually the smartest guy in the room. And if you ever get a chance to sit down, break bread, have the opportunity to to sit down and have a conversation with Jay, do it. If you have an opportunity to just sit in his presence and listen to a conversation that he's having with somebody else, do it. Do it. All right? Because I've figured out something. Jay isn't the smartest guy in the room. No, he's right. I've been misquoting, and I've been saying the wrong thing all of these years. You know who the smartest guy in the room is? Me. You know why? Because I figured out the secret. The source of the information for all of it is Jay Widener. And I'm your host, Jimmy Church. It's going to be a great night tonight. Of course, Jay is with us. We're going to do the Mystery Schools from then until now. Tomorrow night, right here, Isaac Arthur. We're doing the Fermi Paradox all night. And then uh, Thursday night's Fader night, we've got two special guests that uh, will be joining us. Uh, Serena Wright Taylor is going to be here and Douglas Taylor are uh, both uh, going to join us uh, for a little bit on Thursday night. And then it's open lines all night long. And then hopefully, if I'm lucky, I'll get to this weekend and and get some rest. All right? So I'm going to get out of here. Let's get Jay Widener in. I am your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet on the Game Changer Network. That's right. I'll be right back. Stay with us. Cold Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Teppy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hey, folks. 
Guess what the number one phrase that Life Change Tea receives by email? You ready? We love this tea. We love this tea. Time after time, week after week, we love this tea. Life Change Tea gives you more energy, a beautiful cleansing, and fulfills its slogan perfectly. The tea that makes you go. So if you want to be on your health game, log on to GetTheTea.com and order Life Change Super Strength Tea. Packages come in a one-month supply, and when you brew this stuff, wait until you see the results. Aren't we all about the results? And with a lot of people's health struggling, we can use a little bit of help. Doctors will tell you, disease starts in the gut. So, log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Be our next email saying, I love this tea. I mean, I love this tea. Get the tea at GetTheTea.com. Helping America, one tea bag at a time. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. <laughs> Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find Fast Start Diet on Amazon or go to FastStartDiet.com and use promo code TALK to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, Fast Start will include their number one rated LiPo3 appetite suppressant spray free with your order. This is Jimmy Church. And whatever your diet plans are, do what I did. Go to FastStartDiet.com. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What a great week. Here on the show, it seems like we always have a great week. It's never a downer week, right? Last night, Jay-Z night. Tonight, Jay Widener. Tomorrow night, Isaac Arthur. Somebody pinch me. It's my gig. It's my job. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. Thursday night, Fader night. We've got Serena Wright Taylor and Douglas Taylor uh, are going to be stopping by for a little conversation. And then open lines all night long. All right, so tonight is Jay Widener. Called by Wired Magazine, an authority on the hermetic and alchemical traditions, Jay Widener is a renowned filmmaker, he's an author, he's a scholar, considered to be a modern-day Indiana Jones. That is uh, bantered around quite a bit by others, but with Jay, it's uh, it, it, it applies. His ongoing worldwide quest to find those clues to mankind's spiritual destiny via ancient societies and artifacts. His body of work offers great insight into the circumstances that have led to the current global crisis. He's a writer. He's a director of feature films like The Last Avatar. He directed the critically acclaimed documentary Infinity, The Ultimate Trip, The Journey Beyond Death, and writer-director of the documentary series on the work of Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick's Odyssey, and Beyond the Infinite. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, the one and only Jay Widener. Jay, good evening, man. How are you? Hey, I'm good, man. How are you? It's uh, always good to hear your voice, Jay. And before I, you know, oh, I just want to go, what you been up to? <laughs> but, you know, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to let that go. But, uh, but uh, the mood, the mood is great around well, here. It is. But let, let me just say this. If you live your life right, um, you will be victorious in the darkest of moments. And remember, your enemies will always go south, and most of them are probably going to go to jail. <laughs> can I can I quote you? You know, you know, Twitter's gonna yeah. <laughs> Twitter's gonna light up. 
Twitter's going to light up. Okay, so Jay, um, I, I figured something out, and uh, and this is what I figured out. You and I have argued a lot over the years about the way that uh, I've always gone out and said that you're the smartest guy in the room, and I've done that uh, publicly way too many times. And you're like, Church, don't do it. Don't do it tonight. But I figured it out, Jay. You're not the smartest guy in the room. You're no, not. I'm not. No, you're not. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I am. I am because I I found you to go and 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 steal all of your stuff, man. That's and that makes me smarter, right? That's, uh, <laughs> That's right? So I'm going with that. I'm going with that. Now somebody just tweeted. I actually want to start out here, uh, Jay, because it it's, it sets the tone for tonight. And oddly enough, this tweet came out uh, 11 minutes ago, and you and I talked about this about 45 minutes ago, and we've certainly talked about it before. But this is the question that just popped up in Twitter. Jimmy, please ask Jay if he's done a deep dive with the Mystery Babylon series by Bill Cooper. <laughs> and, and I'm reading the tweet, and uh, I thought, you know what? That is the perfect place to start tonight. Because Bill, uh, Bill, uh, he had me from episode one. I've listened to, I think there's 50. I've listened to the entire series. I don't know how many, I don't know how many days and weeks that I've invested into re-listening to that. But there's a reason why it's uh, it's so good, isn't it? Oh, my God. It was one of the beginning pioneering works of this whole uh, movement. Uh, Bill Cooper was a, you know, I, I, don't, I don't believe he was right with the driver killing JFK, I think that was just a smudgy video, but 98% of everything that he uncovered uh, was absolutely spot on. You know, I had a, um, he was reading my book on his radio show, my book, A Monument to the End of Time, which I wrote with Vincent Bridges in um, 2001, just a few weeks after uh, 9-11, and um, I called him. And thanked him for giving my book publicity. And we had a short conversation. And um, then about two hours later, I got an email from my friend Jeff Rents telling me that Bill Cooper had just been killed by um, the police. And so I very likely am one of the last people to actually talk to Bill Cooper. Uh, what day do you know? Uh, what day that you spoke to him? Was it Was it the day before? No, it was the day he died. It was about two hours before he was shot. That's incredible. And he complained to me. He complained to me that there was these people playing rap music because he lived in the middle of nowhere in Arizona. And he said there was somebody, you know, right nearby playing really loud rap music, driving him crazy. And we now know it was the local police force that was playing rap music because they knew it would drive him crazy. He came out of the house with a gun and they killed him. I I the more that I think about uh the the death of Bill Cooper is that uh, he was taken out and it's that's a bold statement to say and I and I realize that but he was just uh he was just too controversial. He was too spot on the money. Well, and the Bin Laden right. stuff right after, Don't forget it was right after 9/11, so he had predicted 9/11 and he said they would blame it on Osama bin Laden about a year before. So, you know, not too many people got that close. Yeah, yeah. Hey Jay, I need you to uh to uh get closer to your phone. You're you're wavering. Okay. You're All right. You're I'm here. You're wavering. Yeah, and uh the the influence that he had on so many uh, and I know I realize that he's swaying in different directions. He was, you know, he covered the UFO uh, subject and then and then pulled away from that. But he also did that on a bunch of different subjects. He just went where his heart was taking him. But he influenced a, an entire generation, and he was he, he was he was steadfast. He was he was a, a really really good researcher, and he's a pretty good public speaker too. So. Um, he was definitely a danger um, to the world. And, uh, you know, he pinpointed some other things, which I want to delicately 
pose, but he, you know, he identified a fairly famous radio talk show host as being possibly not who he says he is. And, um, um, I tend to, the more I research into some of these things, I tend to agree that Bill Cooper was really onto some things that, uh, a lot of us uh, let slip by. I went, uh, we can move on from this, but I went and watched um, all of his uh, public appearances, right? I watched them all many, many, many times. And his ability to um, orate is is up there with any of the best. And and to to pull in... There is a cycle that you do when you do public speaking, right? You you raise the right. the tension, then you let it calm down, then you raise it again, and you go through these waves, right? You go through these waves. And most public speakers are taught this. Okay, they're taught this, and, and they do it effectively. Uh, I don't think that Bill went to college uh, for speech making. I don't. But his his way of doing it was his... Uh, was as powerful as anybody else that I that I know of. His command of a room was paramount. It was. I mean, I saw him live in uh, must be 1989, 1990, and I was you know just a novice at all of this at the time, and I was completely mesmerized. And I actually went up and talked to him after the lecture, and we had a little spent a little time hanging out, and it kind of put me on my career. Yeah, yeah, incredible guy, incredible guy. All right, now let's uh, uh, let's let's actually do this. I want to start off on the right foot with all of this. I don't know if you heard my opening rant tonight, but the the mystery schools, the mystery schools, alchemy, hermeticism. Uh, I don't know in which order, but three of the most difficult things to research on this planet. Three of the most difficult things, because the information that is out there is basically false. It's false. It's not the real stuff. And the real stuff is intentionally has been kept from us since the very, very beginning for a lot of different reasons. But going out there and looking at something like the mystery schools, there's no information out there. You can find references to mystery schools but the who what when why where and and all of that that you would think that would uh go along with that is is simply non-existent why is that jay why is the information missing well first off it was esoteric information so it was kept within secret societies and as secret societies either fell apart or were destroyed or even went further underground, so did the mysteries that they were teaching. And we have to remember that the church, um, not trying to castigate the Catholic Church, but the church also went after uh, these guys, and so did kings. I mean, it was a very dangerous, it was a very dangerous uh, thing to be an alchemist because that meant you probably had, you know, a link into whatever the elixir of life was. And since the elixir of life gave you whatever, 200, 300 years of life, everybody wanted it. So the last thing you wanted to do was ever tell the world that you were an alchemist or you were studying hermeticism, because then they would come after you. And many alchemists were killed and thrown into dungeons and executed and uh, worse, uh, tortured to try to get their secrets. So this drove the whole... Um, hermetic tradition underground and um, not just in the West, but also in China. The Taoist alchemical tradition was also driven underground uh, and actually ultimately destroyed by Mao Zedong uh, after World War II. And so we can see that uh, even up to what, whatever that was, 75 years ago, uh, these traditions were still being attacked by organized criminal elements uh, to destroy them. And uh, that's why a lot of people wonder why, you know, I tend to be a little bit conservative in my political views. It's because I know that um, we have to be conservative in order to preserve 
these traditions and these traditions are in great danger of of disappearing and you know i guess my life has been trying to uncover and then reveal as many of these traditions as possible to preserve them so that we can get it down in books and people can teach it and make you know whatever tv shows it's one of the reasons i went to gaia in 2012 and produced over 1500 hours of programming i was trying to create a mystery school on television and i think i succeeded to a limited degree but you know i realized about two years into my ordeal that creating a mystery school on video without any interaction between the student and the teacher was somewhat difficult because the, the student would have so many questions that really cannot be answered by a video and so I realize that probably going back to face-to-face -face teachings is probably the best way to convey these uh, ancient teachings. But what we have to remember is that these teachings come from a, tr a tradition that says that the human race is two or three or 400, maybe even a million years uh, old, and that we've already uncovered all the mysteries, and that there was a great catastrophe which destroyed this ancient world. And we've been in kind of a recovery ever since, trying to recover the mysteries that were unknown uh, by the people that built the pyramids and the ancient monuments that are found all over the earth. And we've lost track of what that knowledge is, and we've been kind of in a desperate attempt ever since this catastrophe happened to get this knowledge back. And I think We've actually done a really good job in the last 10 or 15 years because of the Internet and shows like yours where we can get this knowledge out. When we talk about uh, the mystery schools and you hear a conversation going out there uh, between people, um, the definition and what they are actually talking about may not be accurate is the wrong way to put it. But there's so many different interpretations of what the mystery schools are and were. So for you, present us with a definition of the mystery schools. Yeah, okay. So what is going on here is that the ancients were well aware um, that we were surrounded by an energy force. And this energy force is electromagnetic in essence. It's a plasma force. And you can conjure it up in your brain, in your mind, uh, and build yourself a high force of energy. Or you can project it onto other people. Or you can use this force to, you know, uh, enhance your abilities to be athletic or uh, in business. Um, Meditation allows you to contact this force and let it grow inside you. Yoga is another way to uh, grab onto this force. This force is it's moving around us. It's in the entire universe. And the ancients knew that this force existed, and they used it to their advantage, something that we are not doing, or well, we haven't been doing, but I think we're starting to do now. So when you see ancient monuments, and you see they're built in pyramid forms or circular forms, like in Chaco Canyon, um, you begin to realize that what these the reason that they're in these shapes is that the shapes themselves are creating this electromagnetic energy so that the people that live around these temples can, you know, tap onto this and make their lives more enhanced. Well, you know from the work of Patrick Flanagan and his pyramid work that, you know, you put an apple uh, into a, a pyramid shape, um, the apple doesn't rot. Uh, we also know that if you sleep under a pyramid, you feel better. If you're sick, you uh, get uh, well quicker. And so we can see, you know, by modern experimentation that the ancient uh, idea that the world is really resonant and uh, energy, uh, and that this energy takes many forms. So, you know, the ancient uh, Egyptians uh, tried not to use nouns as much as they used verbs. So instead of calling a dog a dog, they said that the dog was dogging, 
In other words, this is how the energy looks when it's a dog, or a cat is catting, or a bird is birding, or a human is a human, or a Jimmy Churching is Jimmy Churching. Mm -hmm. And so the, the forms uh, are, are, are embodied by the shape of whatever is embodying the form. And that's something that we also got to understand. So we think that we, we, we tend to think that everyone thinks like we do. And for a large degree, that's true. But the individual is also governed by their size, by their skin color, by their uh, bodily features. Um, all these things dictate, uh, uh, you know, the personality. And oh, you can surpass your body and what it gives you if you're aware that you have that ability. So the ancient hermetic traditions were teaching, you know, sacred geometry. Why sacred geometry? Because that's the shapes that give you the highest amount of, of these energies that convey the highest amounts of these electromagnetic plasmas, which you fill up. It's called chi, it's called prana. Uh, there's a million names for it. Um, the the uh, a philosopher's stone found in alchemy was imbued with these energies. And when you held the philosopher's stone in your hand or you meditated with it, you know, you were enlivened by it. And uh, the alchemists, you know, eventually found a way to imbue water with this essence. And then that became the water of life or the fountain of youth and allowed the alchemists to live to, you know, three or four, maybe five or six. I hear even a, uh, you know, uh, a, you know, a thousand years uh, old. Uh, so, and we can look in the Bible, we can see that the patriarchs all lived a long time, uh, you know, many years. Uh, Enoch lived 900 years and, you know, it's, oh, it's an exaggeration, but, but is it an exaggeration? Or maybe they lived in a time where everyone knew all of this um, and that it just became you know, lost when we kind of fell into civilization and corruption began taking over. And um, and then the alchemists and the Taoist alchemists all had to run and hide. And that's, I think, what's going on here even today. Now, with the priests uh, going back uh, to uh, the origins of ancient Egypt and, and, and beyond that, before the... Uh, uh, before the uh, first dynasty, um, and 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 going back before that, were the other those priests uh, were the other civilizations around the world? Certainly, we could uh, take a look at Sumer, but you can also head to the Far East and and into China, um, and also uh, South America. Were they all sharing this wisdom? Yeah, I think there was a worldwide culture. Um, the Phoenicians, we know, were sailing all over the world. Right. Um, they lived right near Egypt. Uh, they were great uh, boatmen. And uh, we know that the mummies in Egypt had both cocaine and tobacco in their hair when they did toxicology exams just a few years ago. So we know that they were in contact with South America because that's where cocaine and tobacco comes from. Um, there's no accident that the uh, Mayans and the Aztecs built pyramids very similar to the way the Egyptians did. There's pyramids in Indonesia. There's pyramids in the water off, off the coast of Japan. Um, uh, there's pyramids in China. Uh, this is a worldwide culture that used resonance frequency uh, to magnify the electromagnetic plasma energies of a localized space so that they could grow, you know, crops that were amazing, uh, have children that were incredibly healthy. And um, it's just a really different kind of way of looking at the world that, than we have. And, and I, I just want to say, and I owe this to my good friend Robert Lawler for pointing this out, um, one of the things that they were doing in ancient Egypt was watching the cycles of time. And they knew, you know, when they built the pyramids and the Sphinx and everything 10,000 years ago or more, that there was a darkness coming. And they wanted to preserve the ancient knowledge so that we could understand today, you know, what they were trying to convey. Unfortunately, you know, the forces of darkness have 
kind of torn down a lot of these monuments. So, but what we are really still making progress today in understanding what exactly the Egyptians were trying to convey with these monuments. And it's an incredible message. Most of it has to do with the afterlife that we are not, you know, limited beings that limited to one life that we can advance ourselves and our spirit and our ka and our ba off into, you know, another world after we die. And they were obsessed with this. And this was the, the, the main knowledge that they had uh, preserved from this previous gigantic worldwide civilization that existed before the Egyptian pyramids were built. And uh, so that's what's really going on in Egypt is this attempt to uh, hold the ancient knowledge and just somehow convey it to us in the future. We, we need to take a break right here, but when we come back, I want to talk about Alexandria, uh, of course, alchemy and hermeticism and, and the mystery schools and the establishment of what was going on there. And then we have to start to head out around the world and see where things started to go right after that. Are you ready? I am. Jay Widener is our guest. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, it's Mystery Schools from the beginning to today on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. You can follow me on Twitter at Jay Church Radio. Jay, what's your Twitter? Oh. I don't have one. Jay doesn't have a Twitter. <laughs> there you <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Stay with us. Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Come join us for the 2019 Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles at the LAX Hilton. This year, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Chariots of the Gods with Eric Von Daniken, and I'll be hosting the panel with Eric, Linda Moulton Howe, Jason Martell, Billy Carson, and join George Nori, Nassim Haramein, Robert Schock, Daniel Brinkley, Grant Cameron, Julia Mossbridge, and another 50 speakers who will be presenting at the 2019 Conscious Life Expo. Just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and a full conference schedule or click on the CLE banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Folks, this is very important information. What's to be said about CBD? AncientLifeOil.com. Our CBD is made from hemp and has 0.003 THC, which means this wonderful product won't get you high. No matter what amount you take, what does CBD do for the body? My hands are tied. But you can Google CBD benefits and be astounded. When you're finished reading, you'll want to log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com and purchase. Life is good when you feel good. People are tired of pain. People are asking for non-GMO organic products to help them with you fill in the blank. Legal in 49 states, and again, our CBD is made from hemp. Ancient Life Oil is about helping people one by one by one. If you wonder how good the product is, the CEO takes it every day without miss. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Have a great day. Hi, this is Ray Sobbs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're of the Honey Brothers. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution.
Reclaim your active lifestyle with Angioprim. Angioprim is the original liquid oral chelation supplement. Chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in your veins and arteries that can cause blockages. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. Find out more. Go to angioprim.com. Talk to a trained consultant by calling Angioprim toll free 877 882 7221. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hey, it's Grace. Can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger... You know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. <laughs> Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. What a week on the show. Last night, Jay-Z night. Tonight, Jay Widener. Tomorrow night, Isaac Arthur. Oh, man. I feel so much smarter. <laughs> and I know you do, too. Hey, Jay, are you hip to uh, Isaac Arthur yet? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, Isaac Arthur. He, uh, he's he got a degree in physics. He's got a YouTube channel um, uh, called uh, Science, and uh, the, the links are up at uh, Jimmy Church Radio. I'll, I'll send them to you. But he just covers, he just, uh, from a scientific background, uh, covers everything uh, about our universe and the Fermi paradox and ET and, and visitation or not. Uh, how we would travel to the stars faster than light, dark energy, dark matter, teleportation, colonization. Uh, it's it's an absolutely incredible video series. Re- it's 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 what you do. Uh, you, you need to go check out Isaac. Tomorrow night, check out the show. We're going to do the Fermi Paradox tomorrow night. Yeah, I definitely want to check that out. Yeah, he's... Uh, he's hey, I want to... Yeah, go ahead. I want to correct something. Uh, yeah, I was reminded by my beautiful wife that I do have a Twitter account. I have four followers. I joined in February 2009. And I've never tweeted yet. But if you want to tweet me, it's at Jay Widener, J-A-Y-W-E-I-D-N-E-R. And I will start getting involved in my Twitter account. Okay, hold on for a second. Let me let me see. It's just Jay Widener, right, with no picture? Yep, it's an egg. Four, four followers. Yep. Jay, Jay hasn't tweeted. And there you go. You got four followers, my man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, well, uh, after tonight, uh, we'll we'll change things for you. But you've got to get rid of the egg, okay? Uh, <laughs> tell you. I'll, I'll put a picture. <laughs> it's insert joke here, man, but I'm just going to let it go. I am just going to completely let it go. Okay, so when we are talking about um, uh, alchemy, hermeticism, the mystery schools, and the foundations of everything, from the best of my research, everything always goes back to Alexandria and the way that these 
uh, these different uh, priests and leaders and scholars, uh, philosophers, uh, get, would gather from around the world and share their information, write it down, get it into the library, and uh, that's where all of this knowledge was was stored originally, and they shared this information freely. When I make a statement like that, Jay, is it accurate? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yep. It was a time of great freedom and intellectual uh, honesty and uh, freedom of speech and was an amazing time for the human race. Uh, Carl Sagan once said that if the Library of Alexandria had not been burned, we would have been in outer space by the year four or five hundred. I, I, I think that all the time that if if things would have been different because we were right there. Right. Things like and I'm being yeah. serious, electricity, uh, computers, not it would have just because we were right there. We were right there at a thousand B.C. Right. We were right there. The the advances in, in Sumer and, and Egypt and what was going on that I, absolutely we would have uh, we would have been on the moon uh, pronto. We would have. And uh, we don't know what we lost. That's the other thing. You know, there's a, a conspiracy theory, which I think has a lot of validity, and that is that uh, the Vatican had plundered the library at Alexandria and taken everything to the Vatican library, and then they instigated the burning, um, and maybe nothing got burned in, uh, at Alexandria except tax records and things like that. And um, to which I say... If all of this is in the Vatican Library, maybe we should create create the greatest um, uh, uh, what do you call it where where everybody gets together on the internet and meets at a certain place yep. mob uh, yeah we all meet at the Vatican. we get fifty million people and we meet at the Vatican the same day and we just walk in yeah we could walk over the Swiss Guard yeah exactly we just walk right in. And then we find out everything, all the knowledge they've been keeping for all these years. I guarantee you there's some serious whoppers in there. The uh, the knowledge uh, then started to uh, leave Alexandria in that, uh, you know, the Greek scholars and, and, and Rome and, and certainly Asia uh, and all the way over to, uh, to Spain and up into Europe – where this knowledge they would they would go they would learn and then go back and and continue certainly hermeticism and alchemy uh, did exactly just that. Yeah, that's what the hermits were. They were practicing hermeticism, and they traveled around and learned things from all over the world. They would travel to Africa and to Asia, and um, later to America and um, bring that knowledge back. And, uh, and, of course, we know the de' Medici's out of Italy later kind of became the new Alexandria by trying to collect as much hermetic knowledge as they could. They brought in the, um, the ancient text that had been copied over into Arabic from the Greek and Romans and the Egyptians and translated them to French and German and English uh, thank you, the, the Medici's, for doing that. And uh, then the printing press got invented by Gutenberg, and that was like the Internet of its day. And while the first book printed by Gutenberg was the Bible, the next few books printed by Gutenberg were um, uh, books from the Hermetic tradition, the Emerald Tablet and uh, alchemy texts from uh, Jibber, who was an a Arab a alchemist, and, uh, you know, literally lit the world on fire because no one knew that this a body of work even existed in drab, cold Europe. And um, I believe that actually was the uh, beginning of the Renaissance, which happened about two or three hundred years later. Um, but, you know, it, it, it fomented in the stew that was being created um, right after the Templars got back from uh, the the Middle East, and they'd literally been initiated into some kind of body of knowledge that they were intent on spreading throughout Europe, and they did. 
And, the, um, the same things happened in in Greece that later happened in Rome that Egypt went through and also uh, Mesopotamia. Everybody went through these same types of cycles in that Greece had everything going. They had math, they had government, uh, they had a, a democracy, they had a justice system, they had schools, they had music, they had roads. They had architecture. They understood the stars, uh, philosophy, of course, right? Everything was uh, going right for them, just like it did for Rome. But the same collapses happened with each one of these societies, with, with Egypt and with, uh, with ancient Sumer, uh, then Greece, and then a few hundred late, uh, years later, Rome went through the exact same things. When they had all the technology... They had all the hermeticism. They had all of the alchemy, uh, everything going for them, but they all imploded. Why Why do you think that happened? Well, um, you know, it's kind of similar to what's going on in Europe and the United States today. What happens is, is that these people created very successful societies, uh, societies that functioned at a very high level uh, because of this knowledge that we're talking about. And it began attracting in a lot of people from outside the societies who wanted to take part in the largesse of, of the successful society. And then pretty soon the successful society gets overwhelmed by so many people coming in that it can no longer maintain itself. And over and over, this is the, the plight of creating a successful society is it becomes so attractive that everybody wants to be in it and the society is limited the the successful societies are limited uh by um by their boundaries and their borders because if those borders would dissolve then the larger uh, good uh, that had been created dissolves away. And this is a constant story of uh, not just, yeah, you're right, Mesopotamia. Um, that was incredible. Um, Sumeria, same thing happened. And uh, it's just a continuing thing. It's going to happen on and on. China right now is creating a very successful society. And uh, their biggest worry is that they're going to be overwhelmed by uh, immigrants coming from the West pouring into China uh, uh, and, and, and ruining their situation. And uh, so they're like uh, creating like indoctrination camps now and things. They're so worried about it. And we, everybody has their own worries. And it's really the hardest thing for a successful society to accomplish is to keep itself going. Eventually it wears itself out. And the, um, and I don't know what you know how you can stop that except to maybe make a worldwide successful society, um, and that's possible, I think, and uh, spread these traditions to the entire world, you know. And um, that is not something that you know is an impossibility. I think it, should, it could really happen, and maybe we should be trying it. Is is uh, I want to uh, get to where the knowledge went next after Greek and Rome, uh, after Greece and Rome. But is the the basic scientific principles of entropy something that we cannot escape? In that uh, alchemy and the mystery schools give us a foundation of order and and a way to organize and to progress. But eventually, uh, the knowledge gets too intense, and things get too entangled, and are going to break apart. And it, and that we're seeing this. It, it is something that is inevitable, no matter where you take things. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunately that's exactly right. That's why it's to me it's so important that we get down these principles and these ideas into writing. Uh, and, and into teaching so that they're not lost, uh, no matter how uh, crazy the society gets. And um, again, it's one of the reasons why I really sacrificed my life to go to Gaia and, and do what I did. I didn't need the money or anything. I just thought that this might be the shot that we needed to really push this over the top and get these ideas out 
into a broader context. And I can tell you that, you know, Gaia started seven years ago in 2012. And I, and I can see the permutation of ideas is actually going out into the larger society now. I'm, I'm meeting people that are like lumberjacks and they're talking to me about energy bodies, you know, and right. construction workers are telling me about their, you know, their dreams and, and interpreting their dreams for me. And I'm like, wow, you know, this really is changing. It's a subtle change, but it really is changing. And so I'm really actually incredibly optimistic about where we're going right now. I, 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 I really am. I think that um, we are wealthier than we've ever been. There are fewer people dying in wars than have ever been. Um, we have the knowledge of the world at our fingertips on the internet. We've got great shows like this. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm feeling like pretty good about things. And, and I'm seeing that karma is getting kind of instant nowadays where the bad guys are kind of getting slammed down right away. We're not, we don't have to wait long for it to come. And um, I don't know. We, we seem to be tweaking reality every day, and it seems to be getting better. But for some reason, human beings seem to be getting more angry and uh, more upset, and I really don't know why. Uh, they have everything they want. Yeah, yeah. We all feel, see, this is what I find uh, so amazing with that statement, Jay, is that we all recognize it. We're all talking about, we're all talking about the divisiveness and the anger and and, and social media and fake news, and, and we're all talking about it, but nobody seems to be wanting to do anything about it. it, it, it it's It's bizarre to me. We all recognize it. We all see it. You know, the people that we've known and trusted and our, our friends, our neighbors or coworkers or whatever, where you think you know somebody and then you watch them on social media, uh, you know, snapping and losing their minds. It's like, dude, what, what, what happened to you? You know, but it's, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. You're right. You're right. And uh, uh, one of the things that brings this to mind was I remember um, uh, uh, Trump tweeted out something about Chief Justice Roberts, um, uh, you know, uh, being, you know, not realizing that there are two different forces at work, you know, uh, 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 on the Supreme Court. And, uh, you know, you got to be careful. And then Chuck Schumer, the senator from New York, came out and, and he said, oh, and, and, and Roberts came back and said, no, the Supreme Court is totally unbiased, which, of course, we know is a joke. And um, uh, 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 Schumer came out and said, I, I know that you're a terrible Supreme Court justice and you vote all, the wrong way all the time, but you're right. The, the Supreme Court is not biased. You know, it's like <laughs> these people are saying the dumbest stuff imaginable, and you got to wonder if it isn't the electromagnetic fields dropping and maybe we're all going a little loony. I know, I know. It's 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 everywhere, and I don't know how we're going to back it up and and get back to some type of normalcy. We can't take the internet away, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, now let's. Uh, you know, and you, a person like you, has you know a really rough time in this kind of situation because you may accidentally sit. You're on the air all the time, and you may accidentally say the wrong thing. The next thing you know, you're in a tweet storm that, you know, won't quit. And uh, so, you know, I, I kind of pity in a way. I used to be on the radio, and I don't know if I could do it nowadays as many hours as you're doing without making a screw-up somewhere. Yeah, so far, you know, knock, knock on, on wood. wood. <laughs> knock on wood. Well, now, <laughs> the the knowledge, um, I always picture uh, the, the mystery school knowledge, as, you know, back in the day, getting pulled around clandestinely, you know, by uh, a horse and buggy uh, with, uh, you know, through through uh, some muddy road, through the mountains, and being scurried off in the in the cover of darkness um, when, when things are collapsing behind them, right? And it certainly, yeah. it, it, it did happen with all of these societies. And when, when, Greece started to fall apart. Rome started to fall apart. Uh, what happened next? Uh, where did where did the knowledge get passed to? Well, um, ironically, um, and we have to give credit where credit is due. Um, the Islamic scholars, who you know were very well, uh, they could read and write and speak in several languages, 
And this is right near the beginning of Islam. So Islam started around 600, and Rome fell apart around 800, uh, and we began losing everything around that time, went into the Dark Ages of Europe. But uh, fortunately, uh, a whole group of Islamic scholars were very interested in the Hermetic tradition, and they copied everything over, or almost everything over. So when the Library of Alexandria got burned, um, this stuff was still around. And that's what I'm saying about the de Medici's, a rich Italian family from Florence. They um, they found these manuscripts and brought them over and translated them and gave them to Gutenberg, and he printed them, causing this incredible revolution to happen where we could actually read these texts, you know, and thank the universe that these Islamic scholars, you know, um, coded this stuff and, and kept it because otherwise it would have been lost forever. And that would have been an incredible tragedy. And um, uh, I, I can't thank him enough. You know, the word uh, gibberish, that comes from the word jibbar. And jibbar was the uh, um, Arabic alchemist who preserved a lot of this writing. And, of course, when the writings first came out, no one could understand them in Europe. So that's how the word gibberish came up, because jibbar... They thought that the writings of Jabbar were gibberish and, you know, nonsense. And it wasn't nonsense. It was just so new and novel that no one could understand what they were talking about. And now, of course, we know now that alchemy is the precursor to chemistry and to several different art forms. And uh, it really was this tradition that was handed down from generation to generation um, of of knowledge, of knowledge not just of how you become enlightened, but knowledge that foretells future catastrophes and what the nature of those catastrophes is going to be so you can hide out when these things happen. It was a way to protect the human race. It was a way to convey vast amounts of information through symbols, not through language. They believed that symbols would last much longer than the written word, so they talked and conveyed their art form using symbols, and um, indeed they're right. Symbols are much easier to understand, or are like um, zip files. When you unload a symbol, it's like unloading a zip file, just tons and tons of information pours out from a symbol once you decipher it correctly. And um, But also this deciphering process and this trying to understand the hermetic tradition changes the way you think and you become a much more, um, I don't want to say open-minded, much more uh, of a person who realizes that anything is probably possible in this world. And to not just, you know, uh, say that something is impossible when you first hear it. So, you know, when I hear something odd or unusual i'm the first person to perk up and listen because i know that this universe is absolutely infinite and there's infinite amounts of things that can happen the alchemist depends on that infinite amount of things to happen which is why they do their experiments or repeating the same experiment hoping for a different set of circumstances which will change the outcome of their experiment what an experiment may just be meditations uh, we're not talking about physical experiments in, in, in that way. We're saying that it's it's a way to test reality, to poke a stick at reality, and to get a different response. And when you get that one unique, novel response uh, from reality, then you know that reality offers a whole plethora of of different chances. And that means that anything is possible. And therefore, your life, is not a meaningless, you know, traits through darkness. It's a, it's a wonderful experience where you are working with reality to shape it and to change it and to possibly make it into a better reality, which is really the whole point of the Hermetic tradition to make this world, you know, a better place for everybody. When uh, uh, the Sufis and Islam and throughout this time, and we, you know, we go back and, 
and talk about, you know, the Crusades and what was going on in Jerusalem at the time, uh, certainly around the temple, too, as well, that the uh, that the way that Islam rose, uh, part of it is, of course, religion, but the other part of it is the knowledge of the arts that they were now in possession of. And now we've got these two forces that, that you know, are pretty advanced, and I'm talking about uh, the Templars and and the West going against what was uh, rising up in the Middle East, and it and and uh, Islam came out of nowhere. You know, it went from virtual zero in 700 uh, to just a couple of decades later uh, to taking over countries. Absolutely, very powerful force, and. Um... One of the things that the Templars, of course, they came up against Islam when they went to Jerusalem um, in order to so-called protect the uh, natives who were Christians coming to Jerusalem to pray. And uh, that, of course, story is bucked because how can nine guys protect hundreds of, of pilgrims? So we really realized that the Templars were really an intel operation uh, probably coming from rich families in the south of France, um, and that their job was to go to the Middle East and find out everything they could. And one of the things that happened was was that there, at the time that they were in Jerusalem, there was a rumor of the old man of the mountain, who was an Islamic warrior who lived in the mountains of Turkey, I believe, And he created a group of people called the Hashashans, which is now, of course, assassins. That's right. And the Hashashans would smoke hash and um, learn the arts of how to assassinate people. And this is, of course, how Islam advanced so quickly in the 200 years, because basically they learned the art of assassination. And the old man in the mountain was the guy that, knew these arts, but he also knew alchemy and a lot of other arts. And he invited the Templars up to his place in the uh, mountains, and he converted them to um, Sufism. And, uh, and and later, when uh, Freemasonry was created by the Templars, it bore a credible resemblance to the rituals the sacred geometry patterns, and the number of degrees that are found in Sufism, in esoteric Sufism. So the old man in the mountain converted the Templars to Sufism. So when Prince Philip later on tried to destroy the Templars by saying that his infiltrators that he had sent into the Templars said that they were not really Christians, I think he may have been right. They really weren't Christians. They were Sufis, and um, there's even a way that you can take the word Baphomet, which is the god of the Templars, and you can rearrange the letters in Latin, and it comes out to be Allah. And um, no, Jay, stop, stop, yeah. stop. No, I'm serious. There's a <laughs> credible book called, um, I believe it's called Fulcanelli Revealed, and um, it's by a Sufi master. And he talks all about, he shows you how to read the letters and everything. And it's a very rare book. I probably cost $300 on Amazon. Uh, Kenneth Rainier is the writer. And um, uh, it's an amazing book about the uh, Sufi origins of alchemy and Freemasonry and Fulcanelli. And uh, an astonishing book that uh, I read like maybe 100 times already in my life. Let's uh, let's take a break right here, Jay. We will continue. This is The Mystery Schools from Zero to Today. Our guest is Jay Widener. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Oh, 
always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All new mana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the new mana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the new mana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com If you have hard water, the lime scale not only leaves white spots, it clogs pipes and breaks down appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars in energy and wear. Eliminate lime scale and other water issues like brown staining and bad odors with HydroCare water products available from Wave Home Solutions. Wave's affordable water systems don't use salts or chemicals. You'll love the way your water tastes, smells, and looks. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Jay Widener, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. You can follow me on Twitter at Jay Church Radio, and you can also follow Jay at Jay Widener. He's got an egghead. I don't know. Did you change the egg yet? Did Sharon <laughs> update uh, your picture? I'll work on that okay. as soon as I get off the air here. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, um, uh, really quick, Jay, uh, we could spend about 30 seconds on this, but uh, this comes in from Australia. Uh, does Jay have any updates on the Nazca mummies or Maria? 
Uh, no, I don't. Uh, we're still doing the DNA tests. And um, uh, anyone who's saying that they're fake is dead wrong. They are not fakes. There you go. There's the update, Dan James in Australia. All right, so DNA is still coming. Okay, now let's move on. Let's move on. So th- what what happens next, and this is my opinion, um, I get all of my information from you, Jay, but is that when things started to transition and the world was in flux at that time, and I'm talking about the Templars and what they scurried out of Jerusalem, uh, you've got uh, you've got the nation of Islam now in possession of uh, the Hermetic arts and alchemy and and the mystery schools. They they are in possession of that knowledge, and then uh, Europe went through radical radical changes. It was uh, an incredible time. What happened next? Well, the Templars came back to Europe. Um, with all of this knowledge, and they uh, immediately began to change everything. They began uh, building over 500 cathedrals, which are actually alchemical messages uh, built into the architecture, which is what Falconelli's book, Mystery of the Cathedrals, is all about. Right. And uh, they been they began um, spreading the knowledge of alchemy. Um, we can see all all of a sudden all these alchemical schools begin uh, sprouting up, uh, including Nicholas Flamel. Right after the Templars got back, he found a book where he got it. We don't know, but it, it had the 21 principles of alchemy in it, uh, which caused him to go off on a crusade to find out the secrets of alchemy. Uh, we also have um, art begins changing from kind of a medieval, flat, no-shadow, art to um, very realistic art with shadows. Uh, We see sculpture begin coming back. We see that in order to build the cathedrals, the ignorant masses of Europe had to be taught how to do mathematics and geometry and to read and write, because otherwise you could not do such a massive building project with an illiterate society. So suddenly, despite the fact that the church wanted everybody to be illiterate, the building of the temple, the building of the cathedrals, which were really Templar temples, uh, uh, taught Europe how to read and write. Just at the time that the Domenici's are releasing all the Hermetic documents. So this was a confluence, an amazing confluence that uh, hit Europe. And if it hadn't been for the plague, which may have been intentional, we don't know, um, slowing down the progress of Europe for a couple hundred years, uh, Europe, again, would have been in the Renaissance by, I believe, 1450 or so instead of 1650. Uh, it got delayed a little bit, but, you know, the plague was a pretty nasty thing to have happen. So, um, you know, again, we see that uh, the work, of, and they created secret societies, and these secret societies were teaching um, alchemical methods uh, uh, alchemical meditations, alchemical ways to enhance your pineal gland. And, um, of course, this increases um, your spiritual IQ. So uh, new forms of spirituality were being discovered, too, at this time, uh, from uh, Swedendorf and from uh, 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 new traditions, even Protestantism started arising at this time. Um, kind of the Catholics began losing control and, uh, their hegemony began disappearing. And we owe all of this to the Templars coming back from the Middle East with their sacred knowledge. And, uh, you know, I defy any historian, even, even top historians, uh, uh, agree with this analysis you know, that that we owe it all, and we owe it to the Arabs for preserving the knowledge that the Templars got. So, you know, everybody played a role. And by the way, the same thing happened to the Nation of Islam that's happened to all these other cultures you're talking about. The, the Nation of Islam, uh, by 800, 900, 1,000, they had built an amazing culture. Uh, the mosques had incredible sacred geometry. There were schools of mystery schools of learning, 
but then slowly, you know, the same thing began uh, creating an entropic situation within the nations of Islam, and they began uh, a kind of a slow deterioration also. So the the traditions of alchemy were pretty much long gone by 1400 or so uh, within the Islamic world. There are still small pockets even today, but uh, for the large measure, it's disappeared from the Islamic world. Now, um, through this period, and it was it was truly uh, an, an incredible time, and I'm talking about from 1000 uh, to 1400, 1300, 1400, 1500, where the mystery schools and alchemy were all across Europe. And if the Templars were in possession of this knowledge, they certainly handled the money, they handled the banking system, they had... Uh, huge, huge amounts of land in in their possession. That the taking out of the Templars uh, was that because of their knowledge of the mystery schools and and alchemy, or was it merely a banking issue? Well, you know, here's the thing: if you're going to be building 500 cathedrals across, you know, the entire expanse of Europe, you're going to need to make uh, move money around. You're going to need to be able to uh, move large amounts of money around to pay for this thing. And the problem is, is that there's so many bandits on the road that you really can't, you know, put gold in a bag and put it on a horse and race across the countryside because you're going to get robbed. So what they did was they created a checking system, the first check system. So one bank in, say, Zurich would honor a check from a bank in Paris. Of course, they're all being run by the Templars, so they all trusted each other. And this ingenious invention was very much um, uh, the, the leaders of Europe and, and the popes were very jealous of this invention. It was ingenious. And so they, so what they did was they, they wanted it. They wanted this invention. It was the perfect way to get around robberies and, and road bandits and, so, and armies, too, that would rob people. And so they appropriated the system by killing Jacques de Molay, the head of the Templars, on Friday the 13th, 1307. And um, the Templars uh, all scattered like refugees. And the church and the uh, uh, king of France, Philip, they took over the whole system. The uh, the knowledge, the mystery school knowledge, the the alchemy, the hermeticism, how much of that disappeared with the Templars? Well, I mean, it disappeared for a short while, but um, the 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 interest was still there, and it was growing rapidly, despite the fact that the Templars had you know gone off to Scotland to get away from from Europe and and the kings and queens and the popes. Um, but everyone now was kind of hooked, you know, if, if you know what I mean. So by the time you get to uh, Elizabethan England, uh, you know, John Dee, her astrologer and chief alchemist, he's writing books on alchemy. Uh, King Frederick of, uh, of uh, um, Prussia is super into alchemy. Um, a lot of the kings were really into it. And... Um, so it was becoming quite the fad, and uh, you know a lot of uh, charlatans and and hoaxers were involved, and uh, but some real transmutations did take place. However, the Templars had the real stuff, and you know the the other ones that were left behind were just not as pristine as what what the Templars had. And how far underground did it have to go? You know, and what I mean by that is, uh, it it had to be, it had to be really underground, where the there couldn't be a little bit of this knowledge leaked, or somebody that was in possession of this knowledge, because that endangers a the knowledge, but also lives. So it had to be completely secret, didn't it? It did, and this this is where it gets really interesting because. What we see is that the Templars had a navigator named Henry Sinclair, and he had gone and mapped the entire New World by um, the late 1300s, early 1400s. And he, it's very likely that 
Columbus, who flew a Templar mast on his ships, uh, got the maps from the Templars. And I believe that the entire creation of the United States of America was an alchemical uh, creation by the Templars uh, through one of their people, Francis Bacon. And, um, and that the entire idea of America was an alchemical Templar experiment um, to create a land and a political system that was based on these hermetic values. And I think William Henry has proven that the capital of the United States is built completely in um, sacred geometry um, patterns and the artwork in the capital of the United States and the rotunda are all uh, about transmutation of the spirit and um, how the land can be transformed through these spiritual traditions. And so when I see the early founding of the United States, and yes, I know that they had slaves and they shouldn't have had slaves and that was wrong, but they were a pretty enlightened group of guys. And um, they gave us something that nobody else ever, ever really got in this world. And I believe that it came from these traditions. Uh, Scott Helmer, the musician, is out there on the road right now. He's touring. He's on, he's on his bus, but he's listening to the show. And he wants me, I'm not kidding about that, by the way, and he wants me to ask you, uh, what's the best book to go and read while he's on the road uh, about the Templar's knowledge of alchemy? Oh, well, hey, Scott. Um, the Templar's knowledge of alchemy. That's a good question. Um You'd really have to look into some of the works of like Schwaller, Delubich, um, some of the people that have translated the cathedrals, because remember, the Templars built the cathedrals. So Fulconelli and Schwaller, Delubich both wrote books about the alchemical symbols inside the architecture of the cathedrals, and that is what allows me to connect um, alchemy to the Templars and then allowed me to look at the history of the Templars and see that everywhere they went, you know, the uh, alchemy and hermeticism uh, 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 came to light. Um, so it, those uh, Schwaller de Lewitz and uh, Falconelli's Mystery of the Cathedrals, but um, if you want to really read a really good book on the Templars, um, I believe his name is John Robinson. And the book is called Born in Blood, and it really tells you about the power that the Templars really had and how they could send literally mobs of 10,000 people surrounding kings, uh, uh, forcing the kings to do what they wanted. And uh, they were a very powerful force who had many, many followers who would do just about anything to protect the Templars. And that's another reason why they had to be gotten rid of. Yeah, the mystery of the cathedrals by Falconelli, uh, Scott, is certainly the reference material that uh, uh, changed uh, Jay's life uh, too, as well. Which you should go back and listen to Jay and I show uh, the Falconelli special that we did. Uh, I don't know, four or five years ago now. It's been a while, but uh, go in and and listen to that. Yeah, my book, Mysteries of the Great Cross of Hende with Vincent Bridges, also goes into the whole Templar connection. Now, I forgot about my own book. Yeah, you need to plug your own book. Now, this yeah. is, um, uh, help me out here. It's one thing for the Templars to be uh, in possession of materials, books, and information. But it's another thing to teach it, mystery schools. Right. And where these uh, these methods are practiced and, and learned and passed on. I, this was occurring. This never stopped. Right. You still have to teach it. Yes, you do. And there's still schools today that teach it. Where can I enroll? I mean, <laughs> you have to be invited. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yep. It's it's. Uh, uh, that's why they're called mystery schools, uh, no doubt. Yeah. I, I, I doubt that I get that email. 
but but they you're right. Th- these, yeah. <laughs> you never know. I, you know, I am 350 years you old. Know. You see it's now, dark. now Jay, the the fact that this stuff has to be practiced, um, uh, not only over in Europe, but now it is is moved over here to the United States. And before we go fully dark here, when we're talking about uh, the the Knights Templar, that order which is still around today. And the Masonic and the Freemasons and those temples, are they teaching uh, alchemy and hermeticism um, in in these different lodges across the country? Well, you know, the lodges, the Freemasonic lodges have become more or less uh, business places, places to meet for business. Um, they're really not interested in any of this. I um have given lectures at freemasonic places and i know more than they do and um but the tradition if you can get into their libraries and read the writings from 100 or 200 or 3 400 years ago you find a very um developed uh system um and i think we just as we've fallen into materialism it's just people don't think it's that important anymore. But what's interesting about this is that these um, teachings and learnings somehow have gotten out into the wider popular culture, which I find extremely fascinating. And so I find um, aspects within pop- popular culture which seem to be spreading these hermetic ideas uh, almost like in the uh, in an understream, underneath the veneer of a pop culture movie or song or book or whatever, there's this veneer underneath, this like river, and this river is transmitting this knowledge, but it's done so subtly, which is exactly what an alchemist would do, that um, the person getting the knowledge doesn't realize they're getting it, but they're walking away with it without knowing that they've got it and their life is being changed. And, you know, whether it's 2001, a space odyssey or the matrix or, you know, a hundred other films that I could name or songs or albums or books, this idea is it, once it got released into the human psyche in the Renaissance, it is cannot ever go away. It's so inviting so enticing that we cannot um, uh, disinvite it. It, It's there forever. And um, I see it growing all the time. A lot of people say, oh, those are occult. um, Those are occult people trying to influence children and things. Well, I'm not talking about like cartoons that are, are overtly occultish. I'm talking about films that convey deep knowledge uh, uh, through uh, visual uh, and audio techniques, which is exactly how the alchemical traditions were transmitted. They were transmitted through staring into a candle or scrying with a bowl of water or looking through the sun through a stained glass window. Uh, it was little things, a, a sacred geometry, contemplating what a dodecahedron really is. Um, the sacred geometry of the apple, the core of the apple, how it has different sacred geometries in it, and how life and nature um, keep reflecting back these proportional um, sectional um, uh, visual things, uh, and and that that is the way that nature unpacks itself. So um, hurricanes and uh, pine cones and... um, and, and sunflowers all have the same kind of vortices in them, and that this is the same kind of vortice that is wrapped around the human body, and uh, is it, it's electromagnetic in nature, as I said before. And we can see that we are coming slowly to grips with the fact that nature appears to be intelligently designed just as we are. I'm not talking about fundamentalist Christian intelligent design. I'm talking about the fact that the way the planets are spaced out, the way that 
Um, the sun rotates around the, the, the galaxy. All of these things are speaking the same language. And this language is being conveyed through geometry and art and expression and music and, um, and the way that we talk and everything. So, you know, it's an amazing thing. The difference between uh, uh, not only elements of Freemasonry, but other secret societies, and of course I'm talking about the Knights Templar, I'm talking about the Scottish Freemasonry, I'm talking about Freemasons and and uh, the Rosicrucians and everything else that started to uh, seriously elevate in Europe, uh, they they were all fighting for the possession of this knowledge so that, it, you know, it's it's called control. But that's exactly what was going down. The, uh, the, the rise of this, Jay, was it, was it to control the world? And, and yeah, was, was that, Good yeah, I mean, is that the end game here? Is it, is it for ultimate control? Well, you know, that's the million dollar question. This is, there was a break um, within the uh, uh, Freemasonic uh, branches um, in the 17, early 1700s called the Cutting of the Elm, in which one group of uh, people, esoteric Freemasons, went completely underground with all of the secret knowledge, kind of leaving the other half with just a, a rudimentary kind of knowledge. And I believe that's why Freemasonry today doesn't really know or understand any of these principles. But this other group, it's still around, and I believe that it's the group that's influencing artists and filmmakers and talk show radio hosts and uh, a lot of other people to uh, think of the world in a different way and to see the symmetry and the beauty of nature and realize that, you know, you are part of it. And then you will uh, transcend into a higher state of awareness. And I believe that that group, this more secret group, is behind the awakening, whereas the other group, the more mundane Freemasonic forces, are the ones that we call the Illuminati and are uh, behind the forces of darkness and war and everything. So what we have is a war between uh, two Freemasonic factions that um, uh, where one wants to seek out the other and destroy it, and the other one wants to work surreptitiously to advance humanity into the next uh, level of awareness. And I think we're getting there. I really do. I think that they're succeeding. And um, no matter what the Illuminati try to do, it seems like they can never really accomplish what they've wanted. And I've been watching this my whole life. And they really, they've gotten close, but they've never really totally succeeded in what they wanted. And, um, and I can see the forces of this other group, what you might call the light forces or whatever they're called, um, uh, frustrating their plans, and um, and I think that that's a real thing. Now let's uh, let's take a break right here because now we're going to get into after the break we're going to set this up for the modern era and where we are today, and it gets more and more fascinating. And the mystery schools are here, and we're going to pick that up when we come back. But Jay, I've got an update. You're up to thirty six followers. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, yeah now yeah, no go and check and also in on my twitter account uh, you need to uh, check out uh mark uh over in australia just gave you uh, uh a hairstyle on the egg so you may not have to update your picture you can use what he's got here this is faith of black i'm your own Jimmy church i guess tonight jay widener it's mystery schools from zero to now We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. 
Poor water quality is a major health issue, and it's only getting worse. Municipalities can't keep up, standards have dropped, and pollutants are increasing. Where does it all end? It ends by keeping the pollutants outside of your home with HydroCare's advanced systems available at Wave Home Solutions. No less than the best purification materials and processes have been developed by HydroCare to provide you with healthy, clean water for drinking, cooking, and showering. HydroCare far surpasses the competition in removing chlorine, odors, iron, lead, chemicals, lime scale, and much more. Don't settle for less when it comes to your water. We'll take care of the toughest water problems for you, whether it's from a city or well source. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, call 888-997-WAVE. That's 888-997-WAVE. Or go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier, it just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave Units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no-maintenance Wave Unit. Call 888-717-WAVE, 888-717-WAVE, or visit dryhealthyhome.com. DryHealthyHome.com. Ride the wave. Wave Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black Blend Coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. So are you tired of being tired? Well, then it's time to get the tea. Hey, it's Lisa here to tell you about this all-natural, all-organic tea I've been drinking that has had great results for over 20 years. It's called Life Change Tea, and it's specially formulated to help detoxify and cleanse your kidneys, liver, colon, and blood all at once. The colon is one of the most ignored organs in the human body. The faster that waste is eliminated from the body, the less time that waste sits in our intestines, spreading toxins to our bloodstream. This tea helps cleanse chemicals caused by outside intruders from our entire digestive system. And get this, weight loss can be a side effect. And with continued use of the tea, you can experience clear, healthier, younger looking skin, increased energy, and a happier outlook on life. So if you're tired of being tired, get the life change tea at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. And like me, you'll be glad you did. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter at JChurch Radio. I got enough followers. What you need to do is go follow Jay Widener. 
That's what you need to do. Jay Widener. Jay is jumping in. Hey, Jay, I don't know if you know this, man, but uh, Twitter's going to be big. Uh, I have 57 followers now. 57. 20 in two minutes. You got to love that, yep. man. Are you excited? It's it's a new it's a new day. <laughs> it's a new day. I heard a, a I heard a great uh, theory today that what we're doing on the internet is we're creating um, a gigantic human mind, and Twitter is like our immediate thoughts. Um, Instagram is like what we see, and Facebook is our feelings and our family. And it was, it's an interesting theory, and I'd never really thought about it before. But in a way, all these different devices and softwares are creating a, a, a you know, a universal mind with, you know, seven billion eyes and ears. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's a crazy thought when you think about it, because that type of uh, neural network, right? When you think about how many uh, connections that are in our brain. Right. It's trillions and trillions and what it takes to create a thought. Right. And consciousness. Uh, that That's a pretty trippy thing. The brain is probably the most advanced thing in the universe. It's as far developed as the universe has gotten. If you think about that. Right. It's the most incredible thing yet. And, you know, done by nature. But if we interconnect the the world those billions of minds and and connect the the hearing the sense right the the sight the feelings the emotions and you interconnect all of that suddenly it becomes a living breathing situation could it be just one giant brain you know eventually just one giant version of what's in your head well i think that's where we're headed don't you i mean i do if you walk, watch a if you watch a flock of birds you know, flying, there, there's not one mind. There's a million, you know, if the bird ha- if the bird flock has 100 birds in it, then there's 200 eyes and 200 ears that are looking all around them. And each bird is aware of what's happening, and it decides which way the group moves depending on the situation. And I think that's what the Internet is going to do. It's going to create this gigantic brain that we're all going to tap into, and we're actually going to be able to know and navigate reality i tell you what is more alchemical than that <laughs> nothing okay you know and to, to give you an example i mean twitter has become such a powerful tool and we didn't quite understand what twitter could be 10 years ago we didn't we didn't under i don't even think jack dorsey did but today if you i mean jay just imagine you sitting there with 10, 15 million followers of Jay Widener, and you know that anything that you type, any idea, any thought, any influence that you wanted to do, that instantly at the speed of light, you can, you can control an ebb and flow of mind. That's powerful, man. That's, 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 that's oof. Like owning a newspaper. I mean, really. And instantane- awesome. instantaneous. Yeah, I, I yeah. totally agree with you, too. The power of, you remember the flyers that would be printed in on printing presses in the 1600s, right? How long it would yep. take for you to get a revolution going? Dude, it would take you a couple of years, right? <laughs> with word sure. of mouth and trying to get stuff printed and, and, and nailing stuff to, to, to walls and, and, and trying to get the idea out. Well, today it's not that kind of party. We take it for granted, but the man knows now the power of what, what Twitter has become. It's, it's insane. Just look at Trump. He, he, Trump fully understands the power of Twitter, and many other do too as well. But to get your thought and your idea out there and get it instantaneous and not have it influenced by anybody else is just you. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. I do. I have to admit, I've been so- reticent to file this because I'm afraid I'll get succumbed by it. and I'll just fall into the well of social media and never come back. 
Well, I, you know what, I use uh, I use Twitter for uh, positive things, for positive messages, and uh, you know certainly to keep people up at, up to date on the show. But um, I do I I don't do, and you know this, you know me, I don't do negativity, man. I just don't do it. I don't. I won't give in. And and I use Twitter for the the you know just positivity, man. Positivity. If I can have my little my little influence on on this world of ours, I'm going to do it that way. I'm just nobody will ever say, man, church was a dick yesterday on Twitter. <laughs> it ain't ever going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to go there now. Which takes so us. That. What's that? I share that with you. I'm really not into talking about people behind their back or doing something negative. I don't see where the upshot is. There isn't one. No, there's there's not. The the universe, Jay, if if anybody understands the power of the universe and and alchemical messages by the power of the universe, uh there is no uh positive without a negative. There is no negative without a positive. That's the way that it works, man. And you will uh you will uh the universe has a way of fixing itself of balancing itself out. And there is a constant thinning of the herd. It's just the way that it is. And, and, no, I know, I know you're right. I know you're right because I will, you know, I will be attacked in a negative way and I won't do anything. I'll just be a Zen master. And eventually my attacker gets befuddled or gets in trouble and pretty soon they're gone. It's, it, it goes, I don't have to do anything. Nope, that, it goes with anybody. It goes with anybody. You're absolutely right, yeah. which now actually, uh, which is, is funny, but the segue of this conversation going to where we are now today, the modern side of the mystery schools, um, when we get into a modern context and we start talking about uh, what is happening now, this is it, it is something that we can research. We can go look into these things, and there are movies made about it, and there's there's documentaries. But the mystery schools today are here. I mean, they are here and around us. Um, with the influence of modern technology and going into the 1900s, and I just talked about the Rosicrucians and and uh, uh, the the other groups. I was just going to go through a long list. I don't want to waste uh, a bunch of energy there. But what happened in the late 1800s going into the 1900s, secret societies and mystery schools are everywhere. They are. And uh, they're having a huge influence on things, including the creation of the United States. And but then we go forward to you know, the two women that actually started the New Age movement, Madame Blavatsky and Alice Bailey, and uh, they were also interested in all of this stuff. And, of course, uh, 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 Madame Blavatsky started Theosophy, which was a huge influence on people like Manley Hall, who wrote The Secret Teachings of All Ages, which was an explosive book that uh, came out in the 20s, which was a detailed a description of all these different mystery schools and what they were doing and what they were saying. And, um, and this had a huge influence uh, on America and, and, and the whole resurgence of this, of these teachings began right after Manley Hall began uh, walking around America uh, teaching people. And then of course, this came into the early sixties, which, um, you could say the entire flower power hippie movement was created by these alchemists because a lot of these um, psychedelics were developed um, by people who had backgrounds that were involved with uh, Freemasonry and, um, and alchemy. And so we really have to wonder, you know, what's going on here. And, uh, we're, we're, um, uh, are, is the modern world a creation of these alchemists? When you look at um, the origins of the computer industry, uh, uh, Silicon Valley and Steve Jobs and 
And all of these guys were really into some really amazing uh, spiritual things. And they created these computers that were doing things like thinking for us and doing our work for us. And um, I don't know. I, 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 I see that the whole point of the hermetic tradition and alchemy is to change your level of awareness. Um, and, and, and I, I think that the entire high tech Renaissance in the United States is done by people who uh, were experimenting with psychedelics. They were studying Eastern religions. They were practicing yoga and meditation. They were studying alchemy and the Western traditions. And uh, I don't think that that's an accident. They would create such a dynamic invention as, you know, the PC and the Macintosh. I just, I think that this is, the, you know, it's like the reason for being. So we don't know, let's say, when you tried to build, when the first guy tried to build the first bicycle, he screwed up. For sure, he did not build a bicycle on his very first try, all right? But he kept tweaking and he kept trying, and eventually he built a bicycle. Well, that's kind of what alchemy is. It's, okay, we don't really know what we're doing here. We're going to do it. We're going to figure out what we're doing wrong. We're going to tweak it, and we're going to come back and do it right. And that's the tradition which has been kind of guiding the scientific world ever since the Renaissance. So, you know, we had computers that were the size of a small house in the 1950s. And then 25 years later, we got a computer that's the size of a small suitcase. And, uh, and now we have a computer that's the size, less of the size of a cigarette, a pack of cigarettes. And uh, this is the continuation of this process where the human race is being taken to these levels of awareness that we've never had before. We are thousands of times more aware than our grandparents. And uh, our grandchildren will be a thousand times more aware of reality than we are. And uh, this is, you know, this, this is the ultimate uh, promise that the Templars uh, made when they brought these traditions to the West. And I think right now we're about to give the things that we've created in the West because of these traditions to the rest of the world. And I, again, I'm a total optimist. I believe that the world is going to get better and better. I don't believe we're getting worse. I don't buy that one at all anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. Well, you know, the secrets of alchemy, of course, we talked about this, right? The elixir of life, you know, water that uh, mm -hmm. extends life and and the philosopher's stone and the, the regrowing of teeth, the regeneration of the cells in your body, the rebirth. Yep. These are the fundamentals of alchemy. If I see somebody, Jay, that is 90 years old or the, what I think is 90 with perfect teeth, is that a graduate of the of, of the mystery schools? You, you, you know what I mean. I the, this stuff is mm -hmm. yeah. But then again, you know, there's some people who just have a natural affinity for living the right life, and then they just you know they age really well, and you know they they've just got that right attitude, and and they of course they know how to clean their teeth and things too, which is really helpful. But you know, I, I'm going to say that if you're 35 years or younger, you probably have a really good chance of living to be two or 300 years right now. How so? That's how advanced we're getting. Well, I, we're I, just, I, we're, I agree with that, okay? And you're being a, a politician right now. You totally danced around what I just said. So I'll say it again. Is are there people today? What are the signs? What, you know, what would you look for for that one in a million uh, a person that you could run into, or is it one in fifty that have uh, been exposed to the elixir of life and these secrets? Well, first off, if they're ninety years old, they're going to look like they're forty-five or forty. Um, so you won't be able to tell how old they are. Uh, yes, they'll have perfect teeth, perfect skin, perfect hair. Um, but what you will notice about them is that they have a very obvious 
glow to their skin. And again, that's the electromagnetic plasma emitting out from their skin and uh, 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 revealing that they have a huge amount of this chi or plasma in their uh, system. And so you can meet someone like uh, the Asian teacher, Montak Chia, who is, I think he's like 85 years old. Um, he practices um, Dallas alchemy. And, you know, you would swear the guy was, you know, maybe late 40s, right? And uh, But he has never taken any elixirs or anything. He practices light and dark practice, and he does uh, really intense uh, Tai Chi and Qigong and um, meditates and eats right and uh, uh, is a very, very healthy old man. And you would, you would not think that he was that old. And so I've met many people like that. And um, and each one is different. Each one is doing things different. And the ones that are really old that you can't tell, they're the ones who have found the elixir of life. They're the ones who found the philosopher's stone. And um, they could be as old as, I've been told, 900 to 1,200 years old. I, I can't disclose a whole lot of details here, but I will say this. I don't think I've uh, shared this with you, but Rita and I uh, were invited to a private situation here in Los Angeles, right? So we we go. And now I'm not going to get into any details. I'm just going to go straight to it. There was uh, a person there um, that uh, was a shaman. And uh, there were things going down that I that I witnessed that were pretty interesting. Nothing, nothing, you know, satanic. I'm not referring to anything like that. What I'm saying is that there were uh, serious old traditions and things and elixirs and powders and things that were uh, were were there. Um, you know, ground stones or, you know, you know, things like that when I say powders. Okay. Anyway. Um, but this guy, I, if I was to guess his age, I would have said 50. I, I, I feel comfortable in saying 50. Okay. He was 95. And, yep. and six foot... I think that's how old he was. I'd have to ask Rita, but I think it was 95, 90, but he was like six foot four, straight as an arrow, perfect skin, unbel- not a wrinkle anywhere, and in and just incredible. And now I'm told he's this age. I can and that was I had no idea. I was I thought he was younger than me. And or or my age. Now that you have to back up a step here and go, what are we actually dealing with here? You know, we're told one thing, we see another. He could be a five hundred years old. I don't know, right? But I can tell you what you know. I can tell you what he's not. He wasn't fifty, and that was a very, very telling, almost disturbing thing to see because it it just wasn't natural it didn't your brain wasn't computing right when you're seeing this yes um i had a friend who worked uh for habitat for humanity uh building houses for poor people and he was in uh india or pakistan i can't remember uh, building a house he was a construction worker uh you know doing you know general generous things for people and he noticed that when he was building this house that every day this guy would walk down the street and everybody wanted to say hi to him and everybody would you know talk to him and want to touch him and everything and you know the guy was about you know 45 50 years old and he noticed this every day and finally one day he was with the people that he was staying with who were local he said who is that guy that you know he walks down the street and everybody wants to touch him and talk to him and and uh, the guy that he was staying with who was his his age you know 40s or 50s he goes oh yeah that's uh Blah, blah. Yeah, he married my grandparents. And my friend goes, uh, wait a minute. What? He went? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he said, yeah, it was almost 100 years ago he married my grandparents. So there you go. I mean, you know, that was, you know, that wasn't somebody bragging. That was somebody matter-of-factly saying that this guy was at least 150 years old. 
The, the, so you tell me. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Um, what would happen? And I, we've only got a couple of minutes left, uh, Jay, before I have to say goodnight. What would happen if, if this got out? Right? Coca-Cola is oh, bottling this, right? I, I mean, what if this got favorite. out? Yes. This is my, my favorite question. So jo- Angeline Jolene takes the elixir of life and starts going backwards in, in her age, right? Right. And everybody in the world, it becomes the rage, right? Everybody starts doing it. Well, here's what would happen. First off, who's going to fight in a friggin' war when you're going to live to be three or 400 years old, right? So there's not going to be any more wars. Who's going to pollute their water supply and their food supply when they're going to be here eating and drinking it for the next 500 years? Right. Nobody. So immediately the food supply and the water supply is going to clean itself up because we're going to demand it. All right. We're, we're going to, we're not even going to have kids. So we're like 120. We're going to go to college for like 25 years. Then we're going to travel the world for 25 years. Then we'll settle down when we're like 120 and have kids and raise them right because we're going to be mature and our kids will be raised right. And um, it will actually bring uh, almost an incredible world, I think. And why would somebody be worried about that? And I'm talking about those that are in power. Oh, well, they don't want us to live three or 400 years because that's what they're trying to do. That's their goal. They're trying to do it artificially. Yeah. And they want the world. Richard Dolan goes into this quite extensively um, about how, you know, they're making a world where 15 percent are going to have immortality and everything. And the rest of us are just going to be, you know, the dregs. And we don't want that to happen. We have to stop that from happening. Um, We have to make this a democratic thing. This is a thing that all of us deserve. It's all of our destiny. And uh, that's one of the things I'm trying to do is make sure that that happens. What's up next for you? What are you doing? Are you working on a screenplay? You've got a new series. What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing a series of the series I created for Gaia Deep Space. I'm doing a third season now. I'm very excited about it. I'm working on contract with them, and I'm very excited. I'm going to cover some really amazing topic that we've touched on tonight. Um, it's an in-depth series. I'm going to try to carry it to a fourth and fifth season and really keep it going. I'm very excited about it. Now, okay, so I didn't know about this. Okay, so you retired from Gaia. Which is great. You yep. you you live on your ranch, but now you're back at Gaia, but not in the capacity that you were before. Now your 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 talent is that it? Yeah, I'm being hired for my writing and producing abilities, uh, which I'm quite good at, and uh, my uh, very uh, writing. Uh, you know, something that Gaia really wants and and needs. So, uh, you know, in some ways, it's an ideal situation for me. Sure, sure. And Deep Space was great, by the way. So you're just going to continue. Uh, are you going to, are you talent or writing or producing Deep Space or all three? Uh, I'm writing and producing, but my uh, the first three episodes are going to be Kubrick and the Moon Landings in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo Moon Landings, in which I am going to blow everybody mind when they see all of the research that I have on Stanley Kubrick and the moon landings. And uh, you will be blown away by the first three episodes of Deep Space. So what you're telling me is that I get to do two or three more shows with you and you get to talk Kubrick. (laughs) 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 Uh, All right. Fair enough. Hey, Hey, Jay, give my best to Sharon, will you? I will. Thanks, uh, man. I really appreciate it. Give my best to Sharon and uh, uh, continue to uh, do everything that you do. The world needs you, Jay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy. The world needs you, too. I'll talk to you soon. Jay Widener, everybody. Jay Widener. And uh, I'm going to give that some breaking news. So there's going to be a season three of Deep Space. Wow. Okay, there you go. This is Fade to Black. I'm going to open up the phone lines now. Let's go to open lines. You know you want to. Open lines, 747-228-2051. I'm yours to be church. I'll be right back. Yeah. 
Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autograph fade to black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hi folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and my family is safe because of Numana Emergency Food Storage. Just go to the Numana banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Promo code Jimmy10. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Great conversation. Jay Widener. I just miss talking to Jay. I just miss talking to Jay. That was a great conversation and always learning something. All right. And you know what I learned tonight? Jay Widener had a Twitter account for 10 years and only had four followers. Uh, that uh, that was priceless. What's Jay up to now? What's the count? What's the count on 
on Jay's uh, Twitter page. <laughs> Everybody, go follow Jay. That's what you need to do. Let me see here. Hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, there he is right there. Okay, what's Jay up to? 92. There you go. All right, all of you fader knots, go follow Jay Widener. It's got the egg right there. It says it hasn't tweeted yet. There it is. He's got 92 followers. I followed him. All right, everybody go follow Jay. That's pretty cool. That's what I'm talking about, Jay Weiner. All right, now, also, um, we have over, I, I do want to uh, drive this home with everybody. We've, we've done an awful lot of uh, shipping of hats and shirts uh, that have gone out, and we are going to start a Fade to Black, Fade or Not page of all of you. I've been talking about it for a long time, but now we're going to get this action going. So, all of you uh, new fader knots and receptions, uh, re- <laughs> I was going to say receptionists, uh, those, uh, get those out there. Post them in Twitter. You can email them to me, but I want shots of all of you in your fade to black gear. Okay. Ian Gill uh, posted a picture today. All right. Uh, he emailed it to me. I posted it out. He's wearing uh, uh, um, Outlander. One of his skulls is wearing a fade to black hat. That's really cool, too, as well. So just a post. And if you don't want to post, I understand that. Just email it to me so I can get it up into our uh, fade to black, fade or not page that's uh, getting ready to launch. All right. All right. Let's go to the phones. Phone lines are open. 747 228 2051 747 228 2051. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? My name is Justin. What's up, Jimmy? Hey, Justin. How are you, man? You got a radio voice. You, you want my gig? Are you going for my gig? Man, I tell you what, I might be up and coming for your gig, big guy, but I don't want your spot. I want my piece of my own. You know what I'm uh, saying? You want your own little slice of this, of this pie. Well, there's a lot of it out there, Justin. Go and get you some. I'm going to go get me some. Man, I tell you what, for my life, the synchronicities are crazy. So I used to listen to Jay. He would do these little podcasts with rents, but I haven't seen him on rents in forever, and I, I kind of got away from rents. So I'm laying in bed tonight, and I'm like, man, I want to hear some Jay Wiedner. I get on YouTube. Where is he at? He's, he's listening with you live, and I never even heard your show before. Is now, that right? Well, are you serious? Are you being serious? I'm not lying, man. I don't bullshit. Okay. No no, no bad language, though. No bad language. Oh, apologies. Apologies. Man. That's why I need my own show. Yeah. <laughs> well, this goes out on iHeartRadio, and we're syndicated and, and everything else. So that's why, you know, I can't. Uh, I hear you. I can't. I you. Uh, but but that being said, I, lo- I dig synchronicities, man. And the universe literally steered you tonight. And were you aware? Did you feel the manipulation? Did you feel the pull? Well, for myself, and even hearing your guys' last interview, um, you know, have you ever heard of Robert Monroe? You ever heard of that guy's name? Of course. Okay, I've read Journeys. I've read all three of his. I can astral travel out of body at will my man and um you know that's a lofty statement what have you seen where have you gone all that stuff right but with what you guys were just talking about these people who look young and the glow and stuff and it's so true and the synchronicities for me in my life they happen so often that it it would almost be unbelievable to most people jay one night i i've i can't get into the details one it was a private conversation so i'm not going to do that but but Jay one night uh, laid out uh, with Rita and I and a couple of friends, uh, you know, were sitting there. And he took us through one of the alchemy rituals, right, for for yep. regeneration and what was involved there uh, from beginning to end. Now, I got to say this. I, what, this is what I will say that the visualizations that I was painting in my mind as he is taking us through this um, was the most extreme, the most extreme Rob Zombie movie you could ever imagine, right? I'm I'm talking about over-the-top visualizations, right? Um, it, It was further than that. 
And so I anyway, believe it. right? And I, so he's taking us through this, and I'm and I'm imagining, and I'm I'm going through this ritual. Um, and the that that was one part of it, but this is the other side. Not to trip on this, Justin. It's it's who told him this. That's yeah. the trippy part. Where How did, did he the, get the information? Right, the mechanical part. Right, to do right, it? right, 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 right. Where did the information come from? And there are people out there in possession of this. Now, the the ceremony that he described to us um, is a, again as frightening and as disturbing as it was. That's one thing. But it's that there are people out there that, that what I'm saying is that's only one ceremony. That's only one process. That's only one thing of which there yeah, are. I know many. where you're going. The knowledge that is hidden from us, it, it, we can't even imagine. Can't imagine. You cannot can't even imagine. You cannot. You cannot. Whatever is going through your mind. And that's why I was saying, Justin, at the beginning of the show, when I hear somebody talk to me about hermeticism or alchemy and, and they practice and they do that, you know what? Just stop. Stop with that. <laughs> you, you, well, no, you're so right. Yes. I think it, it, people get so misled in, in, in the things of the body and they forget about things of the spirit. Now, I, I've looked in the alchemy thing for a little bit. I know that's pretty much Jay's life's work, but I'm convinced that any of the alchemists back in the day, what they were really trying to do was to have an astral experience. They weren't really looking for the philosopher's stone. They were looking for the pineal gland and how to access it. Well, Justin, That's you're right. right. The The whole philosopher's stone uh, part of it, which is there's some truth to that, and there's a basis to that, but that's to throw you off of the scent. <laughs> that's for what sure. The, that's what that's for there sure. Anything for. Anything to keep you looking external or looking at the body. That's right. That's what they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, totally there to throw you off of the scent. And what the real, uh, you, know, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, Jay was saying, and I know Jay right now is going, church, shut up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but that uh, the things that have been told to me have nothing to do with the philosopher's stone. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. Yeah. Not, not even close. So, hey, Justin, yeah. thank you for the phone call, man. Don't be a stranger. And I'm glad. Hey, I'm going to try not to. I'm going to look you up. I, you. I'd like to talk to you more. I, I, I'd like you to, to hear my story a little bit. It might intrigue you, Jimmy. Well, on Thursday nights, we have open lines, okay? And, and why don't you do that? Call us back on a Thursday night, and uh, I'll let you do the entire thing. You're the man. Thank I'll do you. that. Thank you, Justin. Nothing like a first time caller and uh and and welcome. Welcome to the uh the uh fade to black family. And oh man, I'm looking here. Hold on. And this is not going live. Oh no, don't even tell me. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Okay, yep, it's not going live. What is going on here? Let's see. I That is absolutely bizarre. Let's see. Is there anything else I can do here to do this? Uh, let's see here. I, I'm just going to try to figure this out live on the air. That's all I can do because... <laughs> Oh, no. Okay, that's bizarre. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Uh, it's Boogie. This is who? Boogie. Boogie? Uh, yeah, Jimmy. Uh, thanks for uh, all the hard work you've been doing lately. I'm really proud of you. Yeah, right on, man. How you doing? Out of my hospital bed. <laughs> I was listening to you over the computer. Anyhow, I'm getting double, getting echoed here. But... Um, really proud of you. I'm working on getting you a front seat out at Dugway. You're working on a front seat for me at Dugway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm all down for that. When when do you think this would happen? Uh, I'm working hard on it. I, uh, working through a um, family member who, you know, knows another person, another person. But it, it's probably going to happen, so working on it. And when you say front seat, is this front seat at one of the outside of one of the fences? Or are you saying that you can get me on the base? Not on the base, but it'll be real close. Okay. Well, and what do you think I would see? 
I've been told lots of things, so it ought to be great. Bring your night visions, and uh, uh, I hope you're doing lots of supplements. You've been working really hard lately. I really appreciate you uh, coming on the air for us and entertaining me for so long the last two weeks. Yeah, uh, what's going on, man? Uh, I'm cleaning up my room so my brother can come up here and spend a couple of weeks with me and go skiing up at Snowbird or Elkhorn. And uh, you know what? I've just lost you, and I don't know what's going on there. So do me a favor and uh, call me back if you can hear me, because that's uh, that's very strange uh, what is happening there. Let me uh, jump to the next call here. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Oh, man. Just, I, I am just, I am so done. Let me... I'm going to try something else here. I'm going to keep this call live. Okay, so if you can hear me, don't go anywhere. But I am going to try this. Let me see if I can do this. If I go here and I go here, and what happens when I do this and I do this? Now, that's gone. Okay. Huh. Hmm, I think I have two versions. This is what I think is going on, everybody. I think I have two versions of the phone system up. Okay, so I want you guys to understand that, and I'm clicking on one, and it's not getting through. Okay, so I think I just closed it out. So let's try this again. 747-228-2050. 747-228-2051. I think that's what was going on. You would think that, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let me try this. Let's see if this is now working. No. I give up. I absolutely give up. Let's try this one here. I can see what you guys are doing now. And... No, I don't. I don't know what's going on. I am completely perplexed. Yeah, I can see the phone calls. Just so you know, I can see you here, and this is area code nine two eight, and I can see you, and it. But there's nothing here, and I can't put it on hold, and I can't go active. Huh. All right. I'll just leave that there. Let me let me go to this one. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So now, hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, this is Dave in South L.A. Hey, Dave in South L.A. How are you? I just figured when, you know, your system goes out like this, it's it, something's it, nudging me to call in. Yeah, well, see, it's weird because... Um, uh, the uh, I'll, let me explain. There's just like anything else. I've got a hold button, right? I've got a pickup button, but they're both grayed out, uh, and, and so I can't do anything. But when you called in, the other phone calls. See, watch this, Dave. Stay right there. Don't hang up. Uh, okay, I'm just going to go to this one. And Dave is still there. Let me see if this call goes active. And it is not yet. Let me go here. Dave, are you still there? Yes. Okay. Now, just stay right there. See, now that lights up his phone. Okay, let me go to this one. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Can you hear me? No. See, that one's not active. But the hold button is there. Let me go back to Dave. Dave, are you there? I am. Yeah, this is bizarre. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Oh, okay. Just stay right there. Let me try this next line. Let's see if this goes active. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Of course it will, Jimmy, because I this is the second time now when you can't get calls through. Uh, I call you, and it goes right through. Okay, who's this? Steve from Lockport. I talked to you last okay. Thursday night on Open Lines. Okay, Steve, stay right there. Okay, now I'm going to go back to Dave. Dave, you can still hear me. Yes, I can. Okay, you stay. Yes, right, okay, you stay right there. Let me pull in another line. I've got I've got twenty calls coming in at the same time. 
Okay, so now this one that I just picked up is not lighting up. Let's go back to, is it Steve? Yes, I am here. Okay, yeah, this is this is bizarre, Steve. Just stay right there. I'm trying to figure out the phone system, right? Okay, stay right there, Steve. Now let's go back to this one. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Can you hear me? Okay, but that's empty. Now let's go back to Dave. Dave, but you're still there. I am. Okay, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to figure all of this out. <laughs> And <laughs> you know what? The only way to do it is just, uh, and all the phone lines are lighting up here. Um, but, uh, okay. Anyway, Dave, uh, what's on your mind, my man? Oh, man. Just, uh, a fascinating phone call tonight. A fascinating conversation, uh, with Jay. what did you think of a uh, Jay Z last night? You know, I fell asleep in the middle of it. So that's going to be one of those I have to go back to. Okay, so, fair enough. That's a good answer. Yes. But, um, yeah, I think I'll just talk talk a, a little bit briefly on the topic of glimmering versus shape-shifting. Okay. Now, they're, 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 those are two different phenomena. Um, from what I've been told, shape-shifting is much more painful than, it, than you think. But glimmering has to do more with the 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 vibrations that you sent out uh, optically to, so, to someone, to different observers. So glimmering kind of could make you look like someone, you know, they know. Um, yeah, it's a temporary, a temporary mask. It's an overlay. Whereas right. shape-shifting, we're talking about the changing of cellular structure, skin, bones, height, and I, yeah. I've often thought, you're exactly right, that that would be the absolute most painful thing to go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would oh, have yeah. to be. It would, do you know how it is when, you know, you're going through growing pains? Well, you know oh. what? Yeah, it's because your bones are literally growing, right? And, and it's painful. Shimmering, mm -hmm. on the other hand, that's just a, that's an overlay. That's a glimmering. Glimmering. Yep. And uh, well, you yeah, know, but some people have that have that as a you know personality trait. You glimmer. You know that, don't yes, you, Dave? I do. I've seen you in person. You oh, glimmer. Well, you glimmer. You think you've that. seen me? I could have been someone else. Yeah. See, that's right. The what the Dave that I met was a representation of Dave, but he was glimmering. Mm hmm. But it's good for hiding out from the man. <laughs> Hey, Dave, you have a good night, my man. Thank you. You for, too. Thank you for helping me out tonight. All right. Right Peace. on, Dave. Thank you. It's a great phone call. Dave is one of the uh, the coolest people that I know. Let me get back to Steve. Steve, how are you? Thank you for holding. Good. Yeah, no problem, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. A conversation with Jay Widener like that, you know I'm in the uh, mood. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll, I'll be honest. I missed most of it there. I only caught like the last 25 or 30 minutes of it, but... Uh, I'll definitely have to join your uh, your fader team there, yeah, and uh, get the archive. Yeah, absolutely, and absolutely. To it tomorrow, absolutely. What do you What do you think about the thought of you walking down the street and you're with a friend or whatever, your wife, your date? You're walking down the street and you don't even know it, but somebody walks past you that is 500 years old and you don't have any idea. Do you think it's Do you think it's possible? Do you think it's happening? Do you think you've done it? Oh. After what I've seen with my own eyes and experienced, I believe it. That can happen. Absolutely. Jay said Absolutely. To, Jay said to me once, uh, he goes, uh, there's somebody here in this restaurant that's 500 years old. You know, let's figure it out. And it, 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 it just throws that thought into your mind, and you can't get away from it. You know, nobody's going to tell you they're 500 years old. No, you know, they're not going to do that. They, they, they don't want that secret out. So what what are the signs? What is it that you would look for? And I'm constantly uh, on the lookout for somebody like that. And I think I've met a few now. White hair. Got to be something where they look young, but they got white hair. <laughs> look young, but white hair. Have you? Maybe. Uh, there is uh, a movie out. Somebody's got to get it up here on Twitter. 
um, I can't remember the name of it. It's about uh, uh, a college professor. He's leaving school. He gets everybody together to say, hey, I'm out of here. And then it, during the conversation, it's revealed that he was like Neanderthal, right? That he went through everything. And then there's a big reveal about Jesus and 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 everything else, but that he cannot die. And somehow through miracles, because they've talked, they ask him these questions, how did he avoid the plague? How did he avoid war? How did he avoid getting killed or hit by a car, right? Yeah. And he was just like, I've, I've just been lucky, right? I've just been Funny lucky. you said that. Funny you said that. I, a buddy of mine just told me today, that a few years back over here at Lake Ontario down there in New Fay, New York, there were people down there and, and dressed in black that were waiting on the beach. They were waiting for Jesus to, to, to return. What happened? I guess. Did he show I, up? I don't know. You can look it up on the internet. That's what he told me. Wow. I thought he was bullshitting me at first, but he said, no, it's true. <laughs> okay. Watch the language, Steve. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, my bad. You know, Maybe you can help me. Yes. I'm trying to remember a TV series that's, that was back in the late 90s, early 2000s, where they started off in World War II. The pilots got abducted by the aliens. And then as the show progressed, there was like multiple families involved. And the one family had that piece of alien uh thing that they weren't sure what it was but at the end the little girl that was part human part alien at the end when the government was chasing her i don't know maybe you remember the five spaceships that gathered around her to protect her from the uh, yes, military yes what was that oh yeah, i, I want to see that again oh it is uh it oh, okay the movie that i'm talking about uh about the guy that lived forever it's called the man right. from earth I'm going to look that up. Yeah, that, watch is, that. that is a spectacular movie. One, look, one scene in the living room, right? It's the group of teachers and professors, and they all get together uh, to say goodbye to him. And so that's it, right? That's all there is to the movie. It is just right. about the story and the dialogue. But back to, I'm, I'm watching Twitter. I've got to uh, depart here. But I'm waiting for that series to pop up in Twitter. And yeah, I'll be watching. Yeah, yeah. Go check out Twitter. Uh, Steve, thank you so much, man. And I do remember, uh, I, I totally remember the series. They had an artifact, uh, the pilots. Yeah. It was World War II. And and I remember her getting surrounded by the five spaceships uh, to yeah. protect her because she had alien DNA. I remember yeah. the, I remember the whole thing. I just can't remember the name of the series. So, yeah, may, you make me Hey, you know what you need to check out though? Uh we started binging it last night. Check out Mars. It came out 2 years ago. There's two seasons out. They're going to do a season 3. But go check out Mars. It's on Amazon right now or Netflix. Got it. And I, I've seen one or two episodes. Really good. It is amazing. It's amazing. So I'm going to get out of here, Steve. You enjoy the rest Thanks of your for night. Thank my call. And I'll see you tomorrow. Isaac Arthur is here. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. Great phone calls. Man, I, I'm going to figure out this phone system. I, I was close to doing it tonight. It's, it's weird. If I have multiple uh, calls up, then the first one that won't answer, but if I answer the rest of them, they can go on hold. But the first call is left hanging. Isn't that strange? I couldn't go back to the first call. I tried like three times, and that one still wouldn't pick up. But everybody else in order, I can put them on hold. I can go back and answer them. You got to love it. I'll figure it out. Nobody will be the first caller. <laughs> Fade to Black is produced by Rita Kamarian, Hill J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announces our Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This podcast is owned and copyrighted 2019 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. 
It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Tomorrow night, right here, Isaac Arthur. We're doing the Fermi Paradox all night long. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.